ಗುರುರ್ದೇವ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರುರೇವ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ವ್ಯಾಪಿಯತ್ಸೈಲೋಕ್ಯ ಸಚರಾಚರ ತತ್ಪದ ದರ್ಶಿ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ವಸುದೇವಸುತ ದೇವ ಕಂಸಚಾನೂರಮರ್ದನ ದೇವಕೀ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು now bhagwan says that everything is from me only because nothing it cannot come from anything anywhere else therefore that way we can attribute the entire creation to the lord that's why he says i have created everything yeah you create your small little world but you get bound with it whether you start a family whether you build a house whether you build a company you get attached to it and you are bound by it that's why when you have come to the camp also swami ji house family you can't detach isn't it yeah and when family doesn't want you then can i come to the ashram because of our attachment we are bound now there seems to be contradictions in these statements because we don't recognize from where they come when bhagwan says i am the creator of them all yet i am not the doer i am not the doer actions do not taint me and actions will not taint you also taint means means create vasanas create limitations create reactions create karma bandhan actions do not taint me actions do not bind me even though whatever is happening can be only because of me without consciousness neither can your body function neither can your senses see neither your organs of action can do anything neither even your thoughts and emotions can be there yet i the consciousness am not the doer without electricity without electricity neither the fan can move the bulb can light the heater give heat and the air conditioner give coolness hmm? yesterday everybody was complaining it is cold today everybody will complain it is hot ye yatha maam prapadyante you were asking for it he gave now you suddenly realize that you want something else so you can also confuse nature you can confuse god right so ye yatha maam prapadyante tans tataiva bajamya ham the pure consciousness has got no limitations no want no desire no particular quality it's infinite anything you can derive out of it anything can be created from it and therefore bhagwan says that even though everything is from me and that way you can attribute the whole creation to me only yet i am not the doer 
the electricity cannot be blamed for giving you heat in summer. If you switch on the heater in summer, nor can it be blamed for the coolness if you plugged in yeah, an air conditioner in winter. Now you understand? Hmm? So don't blame God. If you don't blame God, you won't blame anybody. There is a statement that we all must have heard as children. And as we grow on, and we repeat it also. That without God, again God used in a general term. Now you understand, right? Consciousness is also very often called as the infinite God. But technically, consciousness functioning through the totality is Ishwara or God. But they are not two different things or high level, low level. Yeah. So we have heard this statement that everything is from God and not understanding you will say, then why did God make me suffer? Why did God create this terrible world? Yeah. God did not create. Yeah. Today the sun is hot because you wanted it. But from where will it come? Only from God. Is it not? Hmm? But God has got no desire to give you suddenly scorching sun or <laughs> freezing snow. As you demand, so you get. However, there is a statement that karne karane wala bhi bhagwan hi hai. Karne karane wala. So he is the doer and he makes you do. Because Bhagwan ke bina ek patta bhi nahi hil sakta. Those of you want in Hindi. Bhagwan ki tarah ek patta bhi nahi hil sakta. That even a leaf cannot, what move cannot exist without the Lord. These statements are there. I told you, this was the first discourse I heard of Gurudev. When I was in college, and that's where my, I started reading books, and my quest began, it was there from childhood, but in college, it is your conscious effort. And you know how it is, any of these aunties or building aunties or anybody who find out that anybody is slightly spiritual, they want to pull you to their guru or whatever books they want to get rid of, they dump it upon you. Now, my grandmother or somebody must have gone and said that, you know, he's reading spiritual books and, and he's listening to bhajans or something like that. So, at that time, one speaker was very, very popular, you know, and she gave me the cassette. Those days, cassettes were there. And we were the few people who had, you know, cassette recorders. So, gave me the cassette to listen. When I was listening to it, Sounded very logical, and that person is very logical. You know, it was very well uh, popular person of that time. Everybody was listening to the cassettes. So you may have social media today. We had our own social media, yeah. cassettes. You know. So while I was listening to the cassette, there was this statement, and he was saying, and only from which standpoint, etc. He was saying. Why do you think good or bad you are doing? You can do nothing without God. Hmm? And he made the same statement, Karne Karane Wala Bhagwan Hai. Why do you think you are doing good or you are doing bad? Basically, he was saying that you are not the doer. No? 
But the way it was said, that left a doubt in my mind and being brought up, you know, in our cultural society, you know, with all this knowledge from my grandmother, one thing we learned is neither to blindly accept anything nor blindly reject anything. Huh? Now the statement is there and if you say God is everything and most powerful, etc., knowledgeable, then it makes sense that without God, nothing can be done. Huh? Without Bhagwan, Kuch nahi ho sakta. Hmm? Understandable. But to understand that the good and bad is also done by Bhagwan. Again, you cannot say that anything can be done without Bhagwan, even good or bad. Then two questions come. If Karne Karani wala Bhagwan hai and he made me do something wrong then why do I suffer? Yeah. See, that's why, you know, otherwise the truth is very simple with all these explanations is to remove our erroneous notions. Then why do I suffer? If I am not the doer, then why do I suffer? Yeah. And if everything is going to come from Bhagwan, why do I do anything? Both does not make any sense when we experience our life. So I know this statement have come from the scriptures, our grandparents have told us, and you know we've heard this statement uh, superficially, it does make sense, but when you think over it, it completely contradicts everything in our life. No? I neither rejected it, nor did I blindly accept it. And in that particular, you know, speaker's person, finally the notion was that just do anything because after all, whatever God does. Do. <laughs> See, how you are misunderstanding. Yeah. And therefore anybody went to that institution had to have an AIDS test. Yeah. Misunderstanding of these statements. I just heard that and I said something here sounds right, something does not sound right. First talk, I go to listen to Gurudev. And this was the subject. Tasya kartaram apimam. But vidhi akartaram avyayam. Know me to be a karta. Unchanging. Ye yatha maam prapadyante taan satheva bajam yaham. So why are some people being liberated and others not liberated? It's what we invoke out of that. And without him, nothing can be achieved. Yeah. And Gurudev took up this, and he took up the same statement, that you have heard this statement, and this is what Bhagwan says, without, I am the creator of all this, but yet I am not the doer. Whatever you want, you can take out of me. And that he gave a beautiful example which made everything clear and I just sat there completely stunned that in such a simple manner he made the whole idea clear yeah? and he gave the example that a car cannot move without petrol. Yeah? It moves inefficiently according to its engine. Hmm? It moves with great speed and steadiness according to its equipment, so the, en the engine, etc. 
the car cannot move an inch without petrol or of course you applying some force but how much dam laga ke haiya how much can you push finally you will give up the car can move only with petrol whether the car goes home or goes to a bar or goes to a temple it is only because of the petrol without petrol neither the car can go home or meet with an accident or go up to the peak or go down the ditch go to a temple or a bar without petrol the car cannot move but whether it goes to the peak or the ditch whether it goes to the temple or the bar whether you go home or land up with an accident is the petrol to be blamed for it yeah ye yatha mam prapadyante how much you press the accelerator to that much extent the petrol will flow through it isn't it it depends upon the driver and yet the driver cannot take the car to the peak or the valley hmm? temple or the bar hmm? isn't it think over this example and all these verses will become clear got it because the following verses are even more amazing and bhagwan says now namam karmaani limpanti namam karmaani limpanti name karma phale spraha iti mam yo bhijanati iti mam yo bhijanati karma bhirna sabadhyate karma bhirna sabadhyate namam karmani limpanti actions do not taint me means do not leave behind an impression in the form of papa punya in the form of vasnas in the form of sin or merit or say vasnas why name karma phale spraha neither actions taint me nor do i have any desire in me and therefore i have no attachment for any particular result because i do not do it for myself not out of any ego iti mam yo abhijanati karma bhir na sab badhyate and one who knows this abhijanati such a person also does not get bound by action karma bhir na sab badhyate such a person does not get bound throughout the bhagavad gita bhagwan has pointed out one thing actions by themselves don't bind but when you have got attachment for the result and what is attachment gurudev used to explain very beautifully when you say you are attached okay who are you more attached to your wife or your mother no man will answer <laughs> okay let me ask the woman are you more attached to your husband or your son it's 
straight away answer, son. <laughs> Attachment is not that you are caught physically, you know, two people are stuck together. Attachment is mental. Whoever or whatever you think is going to give you happiness, you cling on to that mentally as well as physically. This is called as attachment. And therefore, Gurudev has given a beautiful equation to attachment. And he says, I plus I want. Simple attachment is what? I plus my want. Hmm? I plus my want is attachment. And when there is I, the doership, then I want something the, for myself the way I expect it to be. And therefore, when the result comes, I react to it. And that leaves behind a vasana. This is called as karma bandhan, for there is birth, death, birth, death, action, reaction, action, reaction. No? So karma bandhan, hmm? janma maran samsara, hmm? this is constantly there. And throughout the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna has pointed out, action does not bind, it is the reaction that binds. And reaction comes where there is attachment. And what is attachment? I am the doer and I want a particular result for myself. Naturally, the mind is going to react. You will say, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. It's just that you react. Nothing wrong with it means you are in bondage. Nothing wrong with it that you are the one who suffers. Yeah. You get the point? Hmm? And any action which is done without hmm, the sense of doership, that I am the one who did this action, then of course the result must be for me, selfishness. You know? But when we do it as a sense of gratitude, duty, and we do the action, then when the result comes, you accept, you don't react, you are not bound. So as Ishwara Bhagwan is saying, that I, even though I create, I don't create for myself, according to what your karma, your vasanas, demand that is what you invoke and this creation is there but i neither have a sense of doership that i created even though it's statement you have to say hmm? nor i am attached to my creation and therefore i am not bound and those who have understood the secret of my action, that even doing all this, I am not the doer. This knowledge remains with me. The same verse, now you take to the next level. I say, Abhijanati, by knowing you to be a non-doer, how can I get liberated? One is, I act accordingly as God. Therefore, act godly. Hmm? But the deeper meaning here is those who know that Lord because of which all your actions are happening and knows me, the self, the Atma as not the doer and recognizes the atma, the self, 
not to be the doer. Then guna guneshu vartante iti matvana sajjate. Recognizes that the world of matter functions in the world of matter. But I am not the doer. And the Atma, which is complete, has got no desire, no incompleteness, no desire. And since no desire, no attachment, and whatever result comes, cannot taint the Atma. Even if a storm blows in the space, the all-pervading space accommodates the storm, the dust and the wind, the smog, but the space does not get touched. And one who knows me, Abhijanati, as one's own self, which is neither the doer and neither the one who gets affected. Such a person does not get the result of action, which is the subtle result of action, does not get bondage. And therefore, Bhagwan goes to say, Evam Jnatva Kritam Karma Purvairapi Mumukshubhihi Guru Karma Ivatas Matvam Purvaif Purva Kritaram Kritam Evam Gyatva, in this manner knowing, Purvairapi Mumukshubihi, in the past, Mumukshus, those who are desirous of liberation, Karma Kritam, they did actions. And Guru Karma, Karmaiva tasmatvam, and therefore, Arjuna, you also who desire peace and liberation, do the action purvai purvataram kritam, just as the ancients, those of the past, your ancestors, or those in the past who were seekers of liberation, they did not give up action, but in fact did action, but Get knowing this knowledge. Knowledge of, first you have to understand, karma yoga. That how to act and not get bound. Therefore, they did not escape from action. Whatever were their duties, what was the requirement of the times, they did it. And two things Bhagwan goes on repeating in the Bhagavad Gita in different ways, that when you do not know the truth directly, when there are vasanas because you are identified with this sense of doership, because of your identification with the body, mind and intellect, and therefore Bhagwan says that such people to exhaust, and when I say exhaust your vasanas, it's not that, you know, yeah, Swamiji, I want to join the Vedanta Brahmachari course. You know, Brahmachari Brahmacharini course, no? which is starting on Makar Sankranti 2024. Yeah. And my son and my daughter want to join but Swamiji, I'm telling them that you, you can join, but first you exhaust your vasanas and you know, you do your duties. Hmm? It's such a type of people say that, no? Exhausting of vasana doesn't mean uncontrolled 
expression because you create more vastness. But whenever you act without ego, means doership and egocentric, selfish desires, your existing vastness, the result of your past action, your destiny exhausts itself and you do not create more. Therefore, mumukshu sadhakas, those who are desirous of liberation, those who are sadhakas, they do action for what? Without attachment for the purification of their mind. Exhaustion of vasana is purification of mind. And those who act with the knowledge that the Atma is without desire, without doership, and without attachment, and does not get tainted, affected. This knowledge at the moment also is knowledge of the Atma. They do not fear action. And as far as a realized master is concerned, we got nothing to fear. Act or not act. Hmm? All this has been said in the third chapter of the Gita. Hmm? But we are bringing it together for us to understand. Hmm? So therefore, if you are ignorant and still a seeker of liberation, then act in the spirit of Karma Yoga. And as far as the realized masters are concerned, who have got the knowledge that the Atma is not the doer, nor the Atma is finite and therefore has got any limitations or therefore wants anything. There Bhagwan had said in the third chapter of the Gita, such wise ones, such realized masters also act, but not for themselves. Loka Sangraha, for the well-being of everyone. Now that you are living, you might as well do something. Yeah. Therefore, for Loka Sangra. Okay, Bhagwan. Hmm? You are telling me to do like the others. You tell me, no, that's the right way of doing, I'll do it. Why do you say that like the great people did it? Because Bhagwan says now. Kim karma kima karme ti. Kim karma kima karme ti. Kavayo pyatra mohita. Kavayo pyatra mohita. Tate karma pravakshami. Tate karma pravakshami. Yadnyatva moksha se ashubhat. He says, even the wise, what to call as karma and what to call as a karma, action and inaction. Even the wise people are deluded, confused about it, not realized masters, hmm? are confused about it. Therefore, I shall explain to you now very clearly yeah, what is action and what is inaction. Yeah? And therefore, what is action and what is inaction should be known. Now, that beautiful section we shall cover in the next class. And Bhagwan says that one who knows this is liberated. So you can be liberated today. <laughs> so liberating, no? That you can be liberated today. But there will be others. But not now, Bhagavan. 
नॉट नाउ नॉट नाउ भगवान अभी तो मैं जवान हूं आई हैव टू गो ऑन क्रूजेज आई हैव टू गो ऑन यू नो साइट सींग टूडे इट्स तीर्थ यात्रा नो दे द बेस्ट साइट सींग आई एम टेलिंग यू राइट सो I have to do all these things, you know. I've got a family because we don't understand what liberation actually means. So we shall see that in the next session. Today's discussion group. You will discuss what are the different ways your sense of doership comes in. and how would you recognize and giving your own life examples that how do you recognize that you even though very often say i'm doing it for others i have got no attachment but these others don't appreciate me see how different ways doership and attachment comes in to be able to recognize it in so many subtle ways the doership is not that i am the doer hmm? in how many different subtle ways this sense of doership this ego comes in and why how in which manner we have attachment and how do we recognize that we had attachment in that action or we have attachment in the action yeah that is very interesting discussion do discuss on the meaning i think you understood right yeah but you understood or not from this discussion we will find out om shanti shanti shanti